Hey, hey pals. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Frame and Fiber. And welcome to my last installment of my picture framing design process video series. This episode, or this video anyway, features my friend Maria, uh, Maria of ninjachickens.org. Go check her out. Um, and her artwork that she sent to me for framing. It's also a bit of, I had to slap some, slap some things together for this one because I lost some video or I lost some footage. So there's a few spots in it where the transition is a little bit abrupt. So I do apologize for that. I tried to lessen that a little bit but yeah, so I hope you enjoy the video. I will leave you here and I'll see you at the end. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm here with Maria, framing yes. this beautiful piece of art. Maria, would you tell everyone at home about yourself and the piece we're framing? Yes. So, hey everyone, it's awesome to be here. I was really excited when Paige asked. Um, I am a... I'm not really sure what to call myself. I have been a nurse herbalist and studying herbs got me interested in natural dyeing. I'm also a knitter. So in a long story short, I became a natural dyer, eco printer, fiber artist -y person. <laughs> um, so what, what Paige has is a piece of silk noil, um, which is, it was a nicely, a thickly woven or tightly woven um, raw silk that I um, mordanted or I put, I think I used tannins and soy. I believe I'd have to look in my notes, but I used a mordant to make sure that the color would stick really well. And then I put plant material on it and um, bundled it up tightly and steamed it. And that's the result. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'm really, really excited with it. Oh, actually the background color is kind of a peachy orange because I dyed it with uh, Dyer's Coreopsis, which is one of the plants you can also see in there. Is that the little orangey plant right no. there? Yeah, it's so cool. It's, is it a different Coreopsis than what I grow in my yard? Um, I don't know. I have tick, it's tick seed is the... Uh... So there's different kinds of Coreopsis. They all produce color, but the Dyer's Coreopsis is the, the deepest, brightest. Um, you, the Dyer's Coreopsis is, um, I have orange and then I have red and there's actually some red in there towards the bottom right. You can see some flowers that almost look like dark red purple. Yeah. Uh, those are the red Coreopsis and then the orange ones with the reddish center are the orange Coreopsis. It's the coolest. Yeah. It's Super very cool. exciting. If you and I lived close together, I would definitely take eco printing classes with you. That would be awesome. Yeah. So everybody, I'm in New Jersey and Maria's in North Carolina. <laughs> So it's beautiful. Okay. Shall I start framing? Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> I picked out a few different ideas before we got together because I figured with this, you could, there's so many avenues that we could go down because of color and texture, the different wood that you would want to choose. So before I show you anything, is there anything about this? that you are hoping to see in the frame or is there something that you definitely want to stay away from? Not that I can think of, honestly. Um, I don't, I mean, I'd like to get your take on it because you know, often spe specifically with framing, <laughs> when I go to get a frame, I'll be like, Ooh, this is great. And then um, it's not really what I was looking for. <laughs> right. So I think, um, I tend to just grab something that I think is cool, but doesn't necessarily go with the <laughs> picture or what I'm putting in the frame. So I'm excited to see what you've picked out. I love it. You like the frame so much. You're like, I don't care. I want that frame. <laughs> it's such a cool frame. I'll put nothing in it. Well, I picked out three different um, ways to go. So <laughs> uh, let's start with the kind of more typical like something that I think you would expect to see with this because of the colors and the nature of the artwork so okay. first I'm going to show you the matting I'm going to kind of just put the framing on top of it because it's everywhere <laughs> yeah so 
this is just that orangey red under mat. Is it and kind then of rust? This, I'm sorry? Kind of rust colored or yeah. a terracotta almost, yeah. Okay. Kind of picking up the, the, the uh, Coreopsis color. Yeah. And then this is just kind of working with the background of the fabric. And then the frames that I picked to go with that are just really nice natural stained woods. This is a white oak. Mm -hmm. I like to bring that closer so you can see. I feel like, yeah, there you go. So you can just see that's just the lovely grain. And then more of a kind of rustic barn board looking frame. Mm -hmm. And are those both about the same color? Yeah, they're very similar in color. Cool. This is the hardwood. Uh -huh. uh, and then this is kind of, I would imagine this is like a soft, either like a pine or something similar that they mess around with. And then this, a bit more on the orangey side. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just thought the texture, but also the different tones. You've got the lighter stain, you've got some darker stain. Mm -hmm. But still yeah. fairly simple, so it doesn't take away from yeah. or too much detail. Uh, and then if you didn't like the orange underneath, I also had a brown. So if you really wanted to keep it more monochromatic and let the artwork be what was the brightest, mm -hmm. the most colorful. Okay, so that is, I have so much to show you. So if it gets overwhelming, tell me. <laughs> All right, so then I went off of some colors. First, we're gonna see the blue and kind of this chartreuse-y, I don't even know what to call that color, but. So we've got that indigo color and we've got. Okay. And then this, it's kind of a play on the traditional classic molding frame, uh -huh. but it's been distressed. So you can really see where the paint's been or the stain has been kind of rubbed off. This color picks up the background color as well. Yeah. So if you want to get a little bit fancy, you could do that. I like to hold it like this because the glare from my lights really make it look shiny. It's not as shiny as that. And, and then, it's black. It's black. Okay. And then this one, again, back to the rustic barn board look, but it's a blue color which looks really lovely with those. So that's the blue, those, that's, that's the dark. And then I went light colors. <laughs> I'm throwing all kinds of stuff at you. And I thought the dark matte would be kind of cool. This is a, a brown linen. And so you could go with, again, back with the greens and the yellows and texture. And then, this is the last one, I promise. Now really playing off the yellow and staying away from the green. It's a rustic. The brown comes through, so it looks really nice with the matte and then the branches here. So that was a really quick run through because I had so many that I wanted to show you, but I thought I would at least give you an idea of what maybe you like, what you don't like, and then we can narrow it down from there or look at, to I have so many frames, we can look at anything else. <laughs> um, I think my first choice is that blue um, barn board. I always tend to go towards the color as opposed to neutrals. Um, I really liked the orangey frame too. Um, I'm gonna grab it. Did you like the matting? I'm not sure about the orange matting or not. I need to see it on there again, I think. I'm gonna leave the blue in this corner, which um, this is my favorite one. <laughs> 
when I say favorite, it doesn't mean that it's like, you know, if, if we were, I don't know, judges of a competition and, you know, the scores are out of 10, they'd all be in the nine someplace. So <laughs> let me show you the orangey frame and the brown mat and then the orangey frame and the orange mat. Isn't it crazy how different they look depending on what? I'm also trying to think about in my house. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, this is what everything looks like. Okay. There's so much wood in the house and it all has a bit of an orange hue to it. So I feel like something that, that doesn't have the brown and the orange would stand out a little more. Right. Um, and I really love the orange, orangey brown color of that frame. But now I'm wondering, would that stand out enough or would it just kind of look like another orangey brown thing? Because <laughs> we have so much in our house. Orangey brown thing. <laughs> uh, let's switch. This side always gets glary. Let me just tilt it so you can see the actual color. Yeah, I like I like both of those frames with the blue matting. Perfect. Yeah. Now I'm showing you matting. Uh, the matting, so I would sew the fabric down to the board, the matting would go on top and then glass. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's silk, I could also stretch it onto stretchers, kind of like you would a canvas painting. And then you don't have to, we wouldn't necessarily need to use glass if you didn't want glass. So that's another option for you to think about. Um, the pros and cons of that is that the glass will keep it super clean for you and you never have to worry about it dusty, getting dusty. Yeah. The glass also will help it protect it from fading because all the glass I use is conservation grade. Um, the downside to glass is you can't feel it and you know see the texture as close up as you could without glass. So well seeing as we live out in the woods with four cats and a lot of dusty stuff. I think glass would be a better way to go because it would be very hard to clean that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you cut it down at all, we could always take a little snippet and just put it on the back of the frame. And then if someone actually wanted to feel what it was like, <clears throat> they'd have an, a sample. And I will definitely do that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's kind of cool too because if we cut a little piece and you keep it on the back, Years from now, we can see, hey, so has it faded? Like, how good is this conservation yeah. glass? <laughs> That's true. Right? All right. So I guess it's down to these two. Do you want to see any other frame? Do you think? Mm. <laughs> it's so hard to pick. <laughs> I'm trying to picture the whole thing in my mind now. Um, the hard part. Yeah. Will you put the other one down for a second? Yeah. Let me just lift it though. I think, um, I think I would normally go for a style similar to the orange one, which makes me want to go for the blue one so that <laughs> I have something different in my house. <laughs> I love the blue one with it. I think when you see this, I'll send you some pictures um, on email so you can really see this crystal clear. You know, it's kind of hard on these videos, plus with the Zoom and the internet and all that stuff. Um, but what I like about this frame, specifically with your piece, is it kind of, the way that the finish has been done and it's matted really goes with the feel of this eco print. Yeah. Well, how like, the colors have just kind of seeped in and melded into the fabric. It looks right. the same way on this. Like the, the stain looks like it's just like in there. As opposed to kind of the shiny, yeah. like professional or something. Yeah, like it's a little bit, I don't know. I just feel, it, it. sometimes I have a hard time finding the words when I know it just feels right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, I like that one. I do too. So what I think I'm going to do is, 
because I also like these colors that you picked, the mask. I think I'll frame it in that one too for myself, since you said that I get to keep part of that. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited. So then that way we can compare them and you can see both. Cool. And if you're like, hey, I changed my mind, <laughs> we can switch. <laughs> But yeah, I think this is going to be beautiful. No, not that. This. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. It's, it's exciting. I'm so excited. All right. Any, we talked about glass already. So do you have any other questions about this, the framing process? How do you sew it onto a board? So have, um, this is, you said it's raw silk, right? So I will... The, the board that it goes around is an acid-free mat board mm -hmm. that's on top of a piece of foam board. And I pre-punch little holes around the edge and I pin it. Once it's pinned in those little holes, I sew with some mylar thread and just tack it down. So yeah, uh, a lot of times I have a, a, a gun that I use. It's like a hollow point needle. Hey. Sorry, it was a hollow point needle um, that presses a fastener into the fabric through the board. But because this is silk, I'm afraid it would be too rough. So I sew silk. I don't. Yeah. It'll be. I'll take a video of it. It'll be somewhere. I don't know if it's this way or that way, but <laughs> it'll be attached to this video. <laughs> Very cool. All right, ladies. So I will email you, let you know. So you can see this in a high quality picture. And then I will also send you some pricing details so you can yay or nay it. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Bye, everybody. Bye.
is way too generous and I'm so excited to get to keep one of these. So I'm gonna show you both of them. Originally, I thought I knew which one I was going to send her, but once I got them framed, I love them both so much that I decided she needs to pick. So here is this one. Let me get it closer to you. Oops, let me tilt it. I'm kind of in the front window right now, so you can see a little bit of glare, but <gasps> look how perfect the blue and that top mat. I mean, look at the leaf, look at that flower, look at the frame, look at the matting. Yep. Very excited about this one. So for these two, I used museum grade glazing, meaning on this one, it's super light. This one has museum acrylic. Museum acrylic is so darn expensive, but it's so incredibly beautiful. Uh, and there's just so many good properties to it. Um, it's, it cuts down on the glare. It's so crisp and clear. And unlike other acrylics, this acrylic is super strong. It's scratch resistant. So awesome. Crazy expensive. Um, but I just happened to have a piece left over from a job that was the perfect size. And instead of just holding on to it and likely, more than likely ruining it, I decided to use it. All right, and then here's the other one. Now this one, oh my gosh. I don't know, I can't tell you which one I love more. I'm gonna have to take a picture of both of them and insert it so you can see the two of them side by side. Um, this one has museum glass on it. Um, so both of them do the same. They're the exact same properties for the glazing. Just one is acrylic and one is glass. Both are beautiful. Um, I'm so excited for Maria to get these. And I'm excited to hang them up in my, my the one that I get to keep in my house. Uh, if you are interested in more of the actual behind the scenes of the the making process check out my other videos in this series because i definitely show more in depth than some of the other ones okay so there you go uh i do have a bit more footage to show you um from the past this is future me um still in my shop with artwork so a couple of things i wanted to mention in the video talking with maria i had said that i was going to frame her piece and my piece individually or well <laughs> they are framed individually uh, separately as in two different frames but once we finished the video we were talking still and I just loved the blue so much that I wanted that for myself too so again this is a bit of an abrupt jump into the video because half of what I had said in the video, this next clip was cut off, but I just wanted to show you um, the finished products that I had side by side. Uh, I thought I lost that video and I thought I lost my interview with Maria. So I contacted Maria and originally it said, hey, this is just gonna be thrown into an episode, a knitting episode or podcast episode because I don't have footage, but I found it. So, oh, so when I contacted her, I was like, so could you take some pictures for me and a video if you could? And she did, which I love that you guys get to see the opening of one of the pieces that have arrived. So I package, wow, my friend Rachel, commented once and said that opening my packages in the mail is like birthing a baby. <laughs> it is laborious, but it's like that because I want to make sure that the artwork and framing and glass arrive safely. Um, but yeah, so you get to see this. Maria giggles at one point because, you know, she opens it up and there's another layer <laughs> of cardboard. Um, yeah, so... This is where I will leave you. I will probably just end abruptly. So again, apologize for that. Watch on, see a little bit more of the video. And thank you so much for watching these framing videos in particular. They were a little bit of a slog, I'm sure, for some of you to watch because the quality of the video was not the best. Um, 
I thought it was more important for me to do them at the level I was able to than not do them at all. So that's why I did them. But if you've watched all of them, I really appreciate you doing that and just learning a bit more about what I do for a living. If you are interested in seeing more videos, um, if you haven't seen them all, check my playlist. Uh, there's a playlist for the picture framing videos. And, you know, comment below. Let me know what you thought of this series. Let me know if watching what I do for a living is something that you're interested in. Um, did you like the design process? Would you like to see more of me chatting with my customers? So yeah, thanks so much. Uh, if you are here and a new viewer and want to stay connected, please hit that subscribe button and the bell if you want to be notified. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.